Hi, I'm Lynn McTaggart, and today I want to talk to you about resilience, particularly during uncertain times. I was speaking with a, a podcaster this morning, and she asked me how I could reconcile the ideas of intention with those of things like karma and destiny. And did I believe in that? And here's the interesting fact about it all. When we think of destiny or predestination, even karma, what we're talking about is a predetermined universe. But what I've been studying for many decades now is a quantum universe. And a quantum universe is made up of energy, subatomic particles, all doing an energy dance with each other. Any subatomic particle, by the way, is just a packet of vibrating energy, trading energy with other subatomic particles, like an endless game of tennis. And what quantum physicists understand is that the world as we know it isn't an actual anything yet. When you get right down to the subatomic level, every subatomic particle is not a something yet. It's like an auditorium filled with chairs, but instead of being one chair in the auditorium, it's every chair all at the same time. And what makes that all at the same time auditorium turn back into one chair, an actual something, is the involvement of an observer. This has been demonstrated over and over again in the laboratory with quantum physicists, and it's also been recognized with a Nobel Prize, which went to several quantum physicists who have been working on these ideas for many, many years. So this is not speculation, this is scientific fact. And its implications are profound for us. What it is saying is that we are co-creators, we are creating our world. And if this is the case, think about it for a moment. Think about the fact that life isn't predetermined, although I do have ideas about general destiny, life as we go along in it is not predetermined. It's a matter of choice and intention in most regards. Of course, it's not that case if I walk out the door and I get hit by a truck, that's not my choice. But what I intend to do about it afterward is. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about what's going on today. These uncertain times, we hear about them from every direction. We hear about banking meltdowns and war in Europe. We hear about climate change crises, energy crises, um, cost of living crises, and crises everywhere we look. So how do we handle this? I want to talk to you about how fear and doubt are a negative intention. You know, we have something like 11 billion bits of information coming at us every day. But our eye can only take in 250,000 of those impulses. And from there, we even select down very much more what we can put our attention on. If we have fear and doubt, that will color what we see in our world. That will color how we respond to things in our world. And it's like being caught in a thunderstorm. If you're caught in a thunderstorm, what do you notice? You don't notice uh, daisies on the side of the road. What you notice are lights showing you where to get to shelter. You notice what you need at that moment. So what we put our attention on, what we put our intention on as well, are vital in navigating through fear, navigating through doubt because doubt and fear are their own negative intention too. The issue is that intention doesn't have a morality. Negative intention works just as well as positive intention. So if you have fear and doubt, 
that creates the patterns that are coloring your world, your actions, and your outcomes. So what do you do about it? Well, I want to just give you one little tip that has been used by extreme athletes, people like Alex Honnold, who climb up the side of giant cliffs um, just for fun and without ropes, nothing other than a chalk bag and some sneakers. Using that, using intention has helped him climb up to things like El Capitan, one of the scariest um, ledges to climb up for free soloing in the world. And he did it using powers of intention. And one of those intentions was mental rehearsal. And that's something that all elite athletes do. They don't leave things to chance. They focus their minds and they work out what could happen every step of the way. What possible move should I make now? And if something else happens, what's the other move I can make? That kind of mental rehearsal is a form of intention on the body. What it does is it conditions the body to know how to react in real time if that eventuality occurs. And it works for one simple reason. Your brain is a marvel in lots of regards, but it's a little bit dumb when it comes to the difference between an action and the thought of an action. It can't tell the difference. The same neurons fire when you think about doing an action as, with, as when you actually do it. So if you plan and work on all the eventualities of what could happen and mentally rehearse them in your mind, working over how you're going to respond in every regard, you prepare your body, you become resilient. I'm gonna talk about this in more depth on a free webinar that I'm giving next Tuesday called Thriving with Intention Despite Uncertain Times. I have lots of free tips to give you and I'll be giving more information out about my upcoming course, Intention Essentials for anybody interested. So come along, just sign up on the link below come along, you have an opportunity to ask some questions and let, let's learn together how to be resilient during these uncertain times. There's a way to navigate through it and I can help you do it. Thanks for listening.